Good afternoon, Andy here. I am here with Dave Farrell from Papercut. How are you doing today? Fantastic, Andy. Good to catch up with you. Good to catch up. Good to catch up. You are in Portland, Oregon, I believe. Uh, how's, how's the, how's the uh, Papercut team? How are your people doing? How's your family? What's going on in Portland? And uh, Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, Andy, I, I was probably three weeks ago that I talked to you before, right when this all started. Unbelievable, the changes in just three weeks, right? So, but the Portland team's good. Um, you were here with us. You know, we opened a new office in December. And, office. Yeah, you got a chance to go through. So in some ways, in terms of distributed working, we were a bit ready. So we did, you know, we happen to be on a fault here in Portland. So we did some earthquake readiness before we moved into the new office, trial days, uh, working from home. So we were able to iron out a lot of those things as, as part of that. Um, but the team's doing well. About 30% of our team was remote um, during, you know, pre this. And we're very accustomed to remote tools and collaboration with our office in the UK and in Melbourne and then here for the Americas in Portland. So from that vantage point, it's going well. You know, we had um, one of our employees out of Melbourne. His name's Mike. And I think you might have a blog posting on this on your uh, what's happening in newsletter I do. but um yeah he's from wuhan and he went back in mid january for the new year chinese new year and uh he's still over there you yeah, know the I travel ban is still in place <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> stay there for a couple more weeks till everything oh it's crazy back. so but as i look back on it i think you know mike gave us some tips and clues about what was likely to happen which put us in a little better position in terms of probably the most in terms of getting ready for this and and getting things in order well, we were chatting earlier. You're definitely uh, in, in Oregon. You were a little bit um, northwest, and in, in, in the country was a little bit ahead of the curve as to far as to where we are right now. Um, but you know, it's it's got to be interesting for you guys managing this because this is flaring up in certain areas now, and it's been in other areas for a bit. And in other areas, it's it's kind of already winding down. China, I, I'm hearing they are getting back to business. It's uh, factories are back open. So, uh, how has it been managing this uh, slow? We're not so slow evolving virus and and uh you know you did you mentioned you had everything in place for remote workers because you've got remote workers already yeah uh, but now you have more of them right so yeah no i, I, I think it, that's a good question you know as i reflect back on it if you take just the last three weeks when this all started to go it was you know week one was just kind of getting our bearings you know everyone working full on from home and then making sure our people plans were in order um, you know, as I reflect back on it, working remote is a lot different than working remote in this environment. So a couple of the things that have come up over the last few weeks for our team as we're distributed across the U.S. and globe on our meetings, one, isolation. So it, it, when you, just the impact of being in your office, especially people that are used to going into an office on a regular basis, you can't underestimate the isolation side of things. Um, so we've done some things here. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use our technology to the advantage. A um, couple, of, couple of things we've got here. This is, um, I started doing, I, got, I went stir crazy last week. So I took my, my three sons and I have a daughter as well. And we just went out, we took two hours off and we started to do three point contest, ping pong championships. Uh, we played some cornhole. Uh, we did uh, pool and uh, it was a great two hours just to kind of, release uh, a little bit there, which was, which was nice. But we also have people all over doing things like um, happy hour, uh, beer yeah. 30 on Fridays. We do dress up at happy hour. We've got eco print cues been doing that. Uh, ACDI has been doing that. We'll have crazy hat day. We change what outfits, what great idea. all kinds of things to deal with that. Um, probably the biggest surprise I think for our team were the parents that are now dealing with the working from home side of things because your kids are at home. We're a stay at home state, you know, over here in Oregon. And the number, I, I think I underestimated just how hard that's been on the team to try and manage your work, your spouse is working, and then you've got a child there. Some really young, some older, some in the middle. And that's been a challenge for people. I Big think challenge. people, uh, I think there is a newfound respect for educators in our, in our, our community now. Sure. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, you will get a kick. We did um, in our last little brekkie, we had two people with birthdays. So we sang them happy birthday. I wish I would have recorded it. It was the worst rendition 
of the happy birthday song you've ever heard. But it, it was fun. Keep that's spirits awesome. high and keep things awesome. light. Well, I've been down to some of your birthdays. I actually got uh, a chance uh, last year, maybe it was the year before, to celebrate a couple of uh, several birthdays all at once in uh, in the Melbourne um, headquarters. So that was uh, I know yeah. you take your birthday very seriously. At we do, and we definitely do. Hey, one other tip for the for the the audience out there, because I've been getting a lot of feedback from people and ways that people are getting through this, and I think part of our community needs to to share these. But in terms of staying fit and mentally fit. Uh, we've done a number of things like remote yoga courses. Uh, we have a couple of yoga certified instructors out of Australia. Well, it was tough for us to make it into their office in the past, but now they dial up uh, Google Hangouts or a Zoom and everybody uh, joins in. And late this week, we actually have a really good contact in the UK who's going to be leading us through a little bit of mindfulness. Uh, some cool stuff there, uh, just to kind of get your thoughts right, 30 minute break in the day and, and help you just unwind. So maybe based on, on that um, score sheet between you and your kids, maybe you can get a, a, a cornhole coach because you look like <laughs> we, you came in last in every single one of those. Yeah, it hurts. Coaches. It really does hurt. <laughs> it's it all good. things for a second, right? It's um, all good. Funny you said that about happy hours. So for all of you watching, I am. We are having an industry analyst uh, sponsored happy hour in, in uh, Zoom format on Friday this week on the, on the second, actually the third of April, four o'clock. EST, you can uh, email me and I'll send you some information. Hopefully we'll see you there, Dave. Uh, back to the, yeah, to the paper perfect. cut story. Uh, what, is, what are you guys doing for your dealers? I know, um, you know, I've heard uh, a lot of companies extending terms or anything special. Uh, you know, these guys are, are fighting to keep their doors open while fighting to keep uh, their customers up and running, especially some of the more critical ones like healthcare. What are you doing to help these guys? Yeah, well, number one, stay close to the ground and what they're seeing. So we're kind of taking our guiding light from what the resellers are saying. Um, RASCs, you know, Eco Print Q, ACDI in particular in the US, they've been fantastic through this. So we're on calls, I was just on a call with both of them uh, about an hour ago. A Couple of things that we're doing, um, you know, Eco Print Q is doing four hours free professional services remotely just to help people through this. They're just saying, oh. forget it, it it's, let, let's help you out. Um, ACDI is doing a number of webinars. They've taken a lot of content and they're just, they're really trying to still be present wherever the need is, but doing it through webinars and, and using the tools there. Um, you might've heard, I think Josh mentioned this from ACDI. One good, good example we had uh, in customer that um, in the South, that big healthcare, and they went out and set up rapid testing stations for COVID. And as those tests started to come available, they had certain HIPAA requirements to get up and running on mobile print and the like. Um, so we were able to help out. ACDI jumped right in there, and we've now scaled that to supporting uh, other mobile networks with our print management solution just to keep them up and running, uh, which is good. Other things on the dealer side, training. You know, I was talking to two of the larger um, resellers in, in, the, in Americas, and I asked them a simple question. At your Monday morning meeting with your team, what was your guidance? And uh, one of them, both of them said, without fail, spend at least two hours a day getting up to speed on education. All the things you didn't have time to do on coming up to speed on this versus that in the workflow, go take the training. So we've seen, we already have exceeded last year's, all of 2019 volume for those that have taken our level one certification. We're up about 3x where we were this time last year. So there's just a lot of people on the dealer side looking for training. We've also taken a series of our training elements like training for solution consultants. It was meant to be face-to-face. -face. We've actually spent money now to make that remote. So all that remote learning's in place. That'll hit our dealer community here um, shortly. And you know, just staying close to them is, is, is probably the biggest thing that, that we're doing at this point uh, for the dealer community. And That's awesome. That's you know, awesome. Andy, question for you on that front, your ride for Jillian, right? Huge part. That was supposed to kick off here in a month yeah. or so. What, what's the thinking on that? Well, so everything has been canceled on my calendar for April and May. Uh, so far, the Jillian ride has not been canceled. Honestly, I don't know how we're going to wind up being able to do it, but we are sort of hoping for some miracle where things will just clear up really, really quickly and we can still do it. But um, it's getting less and less likely that we're going to be able to do it. But we haven't canceled and we are still hanging in there hoping that somehow, some way we can do it. But right now it's... Um, it's not looking really like uh, we may not cancel it, but maybe postpone it. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. 
common theme now. So uh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. We've had, yeah. a, we've had a call on Friday. No decisions were made. Uh, we did talk about uh, other dates, uh, you know, potentially re, re I'm not relocating it, but, you know, just moving it, postponing it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll still get something in this year, but we're not sure if it'll be the same uh, ride that it's been. Certainly, uh, we've always finished at, at Rolling Thunder, that big tribute to missing in action, killed in action troops. And, yeah. uh, and uh, so that's, can't, that's off. So that's not our call. That's, that's the government, and, and that's done for the year. So um, part of the ride is definitely taking a hit. We'll see what happens okay. with that. Fingers crossed. Uh, we all would, uh, I'm sure, love to still help out on that. One thing for you, Andy, on, you know, we've got a lot of new people, believe it or not, that have joined this industry. And when you and I were down at the Eco Print Q event, I asked you that question. Help me understand what was the whole story behind Ride for, for Jillian? So it might be something you do in a later uh, video or whatnot. I think that story is powerful understanding. Yeah. You know what? That's a great real story. I'll, I'll film one of these. But um, the short of it is there's a, a, a guy in Rico, his name is George Gorman. Uh, uh -huh. He lost his daughter to uh, to an illness, cancer-related illness. About, she was uh, 16 or 17, I think 17, when she, she did pass. And while sitting with her day in, day out, throughout the, um, you know, the final weeks and months of, of her treatments, uh, he looked around, they looked around and saw, you know, all these kids sitting there alone with no parents, no one to help them, uh, no one to be with them. And it was because, you know, the parents, have other kids at home, they have jobs, they, they you know, have to keep the lights on, pay the mortgage. So what George did was he started this uh, charity in her name, Jillian, to, uh, to basically keep the lights on, to cover people's bills when they can't afford to, so that instead of being at work, they're able to be with their kid where they should be, especially when you know, a lot of these kids are terminal. So uh, yeah. actually these days, right now with what's going on and with so many people being out of work, I believe this charity is gonna be more important than ever. And you know, they've literally helped keep the lights on for hundreds of hundreds of people. We've raised uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for this. And, and um, we are only a, a part of, of the Jillian fund. The Jillian fund is, is not affiliated with uh, our, my crew, the Patriots pack, which is just a bunch of business bikers uh, right. led by Mike Stromalio from, uh, from all covered. Uh, yeah. But you know, it just, it's a, it's a great charity and, and we're very proud to be part of it. So they do have their gala schedule for the end of the year. And hopefully we'll see you all there. You guys. That's good. Big, Let's find a way to keep it going. I mean, yeah. regardless, if it's virtual, it's virtual. We'll do what we have to do. That's a, yeah. it's a great foundation. So this has been awesome. Um, I'm going to check in with you in a couple weeks, uh, two, three weeks, maybe a month, and we'll see how, how people are faring. I, I'm hoping the next interview, maybe you'll be back at your office. Maybe you won't. Um, we don't know. You know yeah, we'll tough take one. it one day at a time, right? And uh, any, any last thing you'd like to say out there to the imaging industry, to all your friends out there? No, I, I, I think maybe this is a, a wake-up call. I mean, this is horrible, right? But – we're, you know, like most view this, how do we come out stronger? And I think, you know, you doing more things like this, we have to find new ways for all of us to stay connected and collaborate, share best ideas. Um, for us, you know, I think a challenge to the team, think about those values that you had going into this and which ones do you want to bold print as you get through this? For us, we have something called chin, caring, honest, intelligent, and nimble. And we're putting a little more emphasis on the C as of late to help our teams get through this, work with our partners, um, but just don't lose sight of that. The other thing is just on the best practice sharing of a, a part of the contingency plans we've put in place, uh, how to help our teams, all that's coming from dialogue with people in this industry and those outside the industry. So in particular, if anyone wants me, uh, Dave Farrell on LinkedIn, shoot me a quick message and then let's, let's, we'll share with you plans we had on communications, how we're doing rollout. I'd love to get, feedback back from you guys on that as well and keep doing these Andy I think it's, it's really you. important and for any of you guys watching if you can't um if you're having a hard time finding Dave's information you can always email me and I'll forward uh I'll forward uh, an, intro, an introduction sorry about that my mouth's getting a little tied up love it <laughs> um, thanks so much for spending some time I know you got a lot going on out there and uh you know it's it's end of the day for me but you're still right in the middle of it so uh, keep okay. doing what you're doing. I love the, the triage stories and you guys are just awesome. I'm sure uh, hopefully stories like that here will maybe uh, pique some, some interest and in, in creativity in, in Europe and in Asia and in, in Australia, some of the other markets. Uh, you know, we can all learn from each other. We can all help each other through this and uh, you know, we will get through it. And, and, and thanks again. And, and we'll talk soon. All right. Yeah. I look forward to catching up again soon. Thanks a lot, Andy. Take care, Dave. Take Bye. care.